Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Brandon Epstein and here on this channel I teach mental fitness training. So I've been away for a few weeks now. I came back and the whole world is dealing with this virus, this pandemic. So I feel this is as great a time as any for me to be teaching you the eight levels of mental fitness. So you're going to start to apply these to your life starting today. You can start to feel more calm in the eye of the storm because let's face it, in the past 100 years, no one in our generation has dealt with something like what we're dealing with right now. So what we need to collectively do is build the mental strength to be able to stay calm no matter what the circumstance is. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Not only am I gonna share you, with you the eight levels to mental fitness, I'm gonna give you some highlights on them, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can train each one of these. So let's get into this. And also, if you're interested, I'm gonna be putting together a free mental fitness guide. I'll make that available. Make sure you are subscribed on my website, mentalfitnesstrain.co, so I can get that over to you. And I'll just say right now, if you want to go through the training for this program, it's available in the B Mental Fitness Training app. So that is linked up in the description below. Now let's get into this, shall we? So the first level of mental fitness is awareness. This is my, my new setup, by the way. I just got a condo here. I'm just trying it out. I'm not very good with my penmanship, so bear with me. So the first level is awareness. And what we actually are trying to do is awaken our awareness. Because believe it or not, maybe you're super woke. Maybe you're not, no judgment. We all go through this journey on our own, uh, at our own time, right? We all discover things when we're ready for them. And so the main part of level one is actually becoming conscious to how you're creating your experience. A lot of people believe that life just happens to them. It's not true though. We actually can control how we feel, how we behave, and ultimately what we create in our life. And it all starts with awareness. So being aware of how you're creating your experience. And so that really starts with just being able to sit in the observer seat of your mind and just watch thoughts and emotions come up. So instead of reacting, you're able to sit back in the observer seat and you're able to just be aware. And once you can step into that seat of awareness, you've awakened your awareness and you can change your reality. All right, so that's level one, awareness. And I wanna to go too deep into this because otherwise it's gonna be a very long video. I'm gonna to try to make this video as short as possible while still sharing with you all eight levels. All right, so level two is gonna be focus. Now, once you gain awareness, so you can observe your thoughts and emotions and not react to them, not have to be in them all the time, but actually stepping back within yourself and just being like, oh, why did I have that thought? Or, oh man, I'm feeling really sad, mad, stressed, happy. And just to be able to observe, we can actually choose deliberately to control our focus. So when you focus on what you want, you get more of what you want. When you focus on what you don't want, you get more of what you don't want. And so once you have that awareness, you can begin to control your focus and actually start to direct your life because it starts with focusing on what you want. Because when you do that, you feel good. When you're focusing on what you don't want, you feel bad. And this may seem really basic, you're like, obviously, but if a third of the people in the US, for example, are struggling with mental health disorders, People don't get this and understand, you're gonna understand why later because a lot of your focus and your kind of reactive focus comes down to the subconscious programming you have. But I wanna plant the seed right now. Level two is being able to, not only to be aware of your thoughts and emotions, but being able to direct them, directing your focus and deliberately focusing on what you want. So that's level two. All right, level three is gonna be vision, vision. Okay, so the next part of this process when you get to level three, once you're aware and you're able to start directing your focus, is to take that directed focus to the next level and actually craft a vision with clarity. So having an idea of where am I going with my life? Have I inputted some, uh, some directions into my GPS for my life? Do I know what direction I'm heading in? 
because without any vision, we're just kind of putting effort in random directions. And if we get lucky, maybe we have some success and we start to feel better and achieve some of the things we want. But oftentimes we don't, oftentimes we just get stuck. So if you don't want to be stuck, you want to ensure you're not going to get stuck, get clarity of vision. So that's not only being able to close your eyes and know where you're going and seeing it, feeling it, tasting it, smelling it, touching it in your mind, having that sensory experience, but also being able to reverse engineer that vision into clear, actionable goals. Like say, okay, if I have this vision where I'm living in my dream home with my dream husband or wife and I'm having this dream career, okay, well, what exactly, what specifically do you want? How specific can you get with reverse engineering that vision into goals? So saying someone says, I want to be rich. What does that mean to you? It means so many different things for different people. Do you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month? Do you want to make a million dollars a month? Rich can be different. So get clear on what that means for you. And if you're an athlete and you're thinking to yourself, man, well, I want to be, you know, one of the best ever. It's like, well, what does that mean? You know, you want a record of 40 and 0? Get clarity around what that vision is and where you're heading because that's going to be your GPS for your life. I already know this video is going to go a long time. And I'm not even getting into any of the juicy stuff. So please be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so I can get into all this stuff in more focused videos because this is more high level stuff. All right, level four is all about your beliefs. This is where this is where all the subconscious stuff starts to come in. Now, a lot of people are running off of beliefs that they actually didn't even choose. They, we, we all go through this subconscious or unconscious programming where at a very young age, between let's say zero years old and six, those are our most formative years, where if people in our tribe, mom, dad, family, in close community act a certain way, they believe certain things, we usually take on those beliefs. And so sometimes those beliefs don't serve us because if you always hear from one of your parents, money is the root of all evil, you're probably gonna have a belief that money's bad and that you shouldn't be trying to create money. And that may contradict with some of the goals you might have in your life. And this can go across the board. There's so many examples I can give you of how beliefs can either build you up or push you down, but they all live on the subconscious level. And so that's why it's so important for the subconscious belief work that you dive deep into discovering what your beliefs are, bringing awareness to them, becoming in the know of what you really believe deep down. And so you can see what subconscious patterns are running your life because most people are unconscious of this stuff. And I'd say probably, you know, only if maybe 1% of people out there do this work and are actually able to discover how they're creating the reality because whatever you believe to be true is true. So as long as you stay stuck, believe in things that are gonna harm you, you're gonna keep having shitty experience of life, you're gonna keep feeling bad, you're gonna keep creating results that you don't want. Highly recommend if you need help with this, get the app. Levels one through eight will reprogram your mind. It's linked up in the description below. Um, I've also made some other YouTube videos talking about how beliefs create your reality. All right. Moving on, once you get to level five of your mental fitness training, you're actually starting to take more physical actions now through habits. Now, habits are just what you repeatedly do. And they're not things that you do because you have lots of motivation. You follow through with your habits because they're a part of your lifestyle. And we don't want these just to be haphazard. You don't wanna just take actions consistently because it's just, I don't know, what you feel like doing on that day. You wanna make sure that your habits actually align with the vision you have. So we're supporting the vision with the beliefs and the habits. So you believe you can do it and you take the action to do it. So habits are actually something that happen on the unconscious level, okay? Actions, specific actions, oftentimes are conscious, but habits, there are things that are just built into our lives. Things like brushing our teeth or showering or we don't have to build up a lot of energy to go do it or get motivated. We just do it because it's part of our lifestyle. So habits, get in the right habits. Huge, huge. All right, moving on. Level number six, confidence. Supreme confidence. Okay? Please, you know, I know I'm not, 
the best at writing. So give me a break. But confidence is something that only comes from putting yourself in uncomfortable positions. And this is the next level. Once you've mastered the first five levels, you can start to really figure out why do I feel confident in general? Why do I feel confident as it relates to a specific skill? Well, in general, that comes from you having integrity with yourself. When you show up in the world and you do what you say you want to do, you build integrity, you build confidence. Now, how do you feel confident about a specific skill? It just comes through experience. The more you do something, the more experience you have, the more confidence you feel towards this. Now, again, this may seem like common sense, but there's so many people that try something for the first time and they're not good at it. And so they just are like, oh, it's not for me. It's because you have low confidence and low experience. You may be great at that thing if you're able to stick with it long enough to build the confidence in yourself to really show up, get into a flow state and see what your potential is. But you've got to have the experience before you can even give yourself a shot. So confidence is hugely important in whatever you want to do in life. But remember, it comes through experience. It comes from putting yourself in uncomfortable positions to grow. So always looking for opportunities to do things that are going to stretch you, make you grow, get you out of your comfort zone. All right, home stretch here, home stretch. Stick with me. The level number seven is unshakable mental strength. It's mental strength. And I would say all of these things actually contribute to your mental strength. But specifically, when I talk about mental strength training, when I talk about mental strength, I talk about the ability to have failures, to have things not going your way, to run into obstacles, and to be able to keep pushing forward. Because with all my conversations with top athletes, entrepreneurs, in my own experience in life, and with my clients, the reason some people are successful versus others is because they have the mental strength, the mental resilience to keep pushing forward when they've come up against an obstacle. And a lot of people just believe that, oh, well, if it gets really hard, well maybe, or if something stops me from trying to achieve my goal, maybe I shouldn't do it. No, you just gotta keep going. And you need the mental strength. So mental strength comes through being able to hone your focus. And that happens through training your mind through things like meditation, through mindfulness practices. All those things are great for building mental strength. And also, of course, experience of moving through obstacles and moving through failures and pushing forward. You'll get the confidence and you'll get the mental strength to do it again in the future. But if you want to deliberately build your mental strength, start meditating. I've got a lot of free meditations on this YouTube channel, also on the app available as well. All right, you guys ready for it? Home stretch, last one. Level number eight. Mastery. Mastery. All right, so mastery happens through consistent, deliberate practice. Whether you wanna become a master in a sport, as a musician, as any artist, as someone in business, what you have to do is get those deliberate reps in. You just need to literally choose the thing you wanna focus on and get as many good reps as you can in, as, as you can as possible. So if you're a boxer, for example, you just wanna master that jab, master that jab, master that jab. More and more reps you get over the weeks, months, and years of repetitions, that's how you get to that mastery. And we all know that famous Bruce Lee quote where he talks about how he fears the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times than someone who's, picked, who's practiced a bunch of different uh, kicks many times. You know what I'm getting at. Basically what Bruce Lee was saying is he's afraid of someone who takes one thing and becomes a master in it, not someone who tries to do a bunch of things and be great. And if you look around at the people who are the most successful, they're not doing a lot of different things. And if they are, they're definitely the anomaly. To become a master, you really have to get clarity around what you wanna focus on and you need to choose to take the time to get those deliberate repetitions in. And the more you get with good practice, the more deliberate, perfect practice you get, the better you get and the more um, you're gonna be moving towards a state of mastery. So there's many masters out there. There's not a perfect amount of time to get to mastery, but it's gonna happen through consistent mental reps. So visualizing, seeing yourself do the thing, and then physical reps, actually going in and taking the action to do it. 
Now there's so much more I could say about these eight levels to mental fitness, but I wanted to give you a high level view of all of them and then give you an opportunity to get into this training, guys. This is by far the most powerful thing I've ever put together in my entire life. These eight levels of training will take you from a state of just unconscious awareness, not even knowing how you're creating your experience to by the end you get to the oneness where you're able to control how you feel, how you behave and what you create in your life. Now I won't lie to you and say it's an easy process. It definitely is gonna take you putting consistent effort in to master this. But isn't it worth it to be able to master this, to be able to control how you feel for the rest of your life? You tell me. So if you're sick of suffering or sick of being stuck, this is a powerful, powerful program put together to help you overcome that and begin moving forward. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Email me, brandon at mentalfitnesstraining.co. Uh, follow us on Instagram, mentalfitnesstraining. Um, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for your time. Again, I'm Brandon Epstein, your mental fitness trainer. I'll catch you in the next video.